Yeah, Daniel, do it again. So, so this one hands. has, so this one has backboards. Like, yeah, I mean, you can drive. On the side. You can drive. Yeah, it's got levels on the side. Hmm. You can drive over the goal. And it's got boost above the goal and stuff. Yeah, it makes hmm. like aerial hits crazy. Interesting. Oh shit! Yeah, wow, that's weird. Damn, damn. <laughs> yeah, get it again with the white hair. That's in. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, I was playing leagues the other day, and my name on there is Man Who Is Dan, which is what I'd like yeah. my fucking PSN name to be, but they won't let me change it. Uh, I know. And, right? and uh, they were uh, like, as soon as I started a game, some I I did a skin boost for everybody. And someone was like, Dan, Dan, you know, I had to get with a skin boost. I was like, what? <laughs> like, at the time, I didn't know what the Dan Daniel thing was. I was like, oh, nifty. Dan Daniel. Oh, I wish they had something like, even Xbox, uh, where they can, you can pay to have it. To change it, you have to pay the game to uh, uh, Right. Yeah. I wish they did that. There'd be something they, they could easily incorporate. Apparently, that, that is their, it's their number one requested feature, and they've said they're not going to do it. Yeah. Because uh -huh. uh, Here's, it, so it, it the, fucks up their servers. The, uh, they, it's one, the way they coded the their servers. Sony one of the heads of Sony retweeted this picture, or this, uh, Somebody sent out that I saw on BT and Adam. It said uh, Sony gets to change its name because they they just like restructurized to make yes. it more of like a global company. And they renamed their major their main uh, headquarters and stuff. And they're like Sony gets to change their name, but we still can't change ours and stuff like that. And yeah. they retweeted it back. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's pretty funny. Yeah, they read it, retweeted it, but yeah, they're never. In. Nice. Yeah, I was right on point too. Oh. Uh, yeah. They got, like, apparently. From amazing Dumbo, the Dumbo. You know, the yeah. Really apparently, it has to do with uh, the way they initially coded the their servers back on PS3. That mm -hmm. if they were to put that in there, it would basically just fuck everything up. Really? Yeah. So like that's why they they just physically can't unless they launch like a new network. So, basically, they can't do it. So well. But, I mean, they will probably launch in the next one. You think they're going to keep the network going? Like, Well, I mean, just think of how much money it would cost and kind of how much of an inconvenience that would be to most people. Digital rights and stuff. Yeah. You know, like all the your digital games and shit, yeah. I mean, I know you, you can obviously you can create a new one. And yeah. yeah. There's always that. It's just you lose your trophy count and all kinds of stuff. So true. If you could, if, if there was even a way to do that in Titanic Transfer but they don't even offer that. It's it's like the if there was just a couple things that I didn't like about Sony that I didn't like about Xbox. It's that. Xbox is is that's definitely the biggest complaint. So close. Honestly, now. Like, between the Xbox One and the PS4, they're doing near the same as this, except for exclusives. Like, they do the same Yeah, they, so when they launched, PS4 was was the winner. By far. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. But especially, like, after their E3. <laughs> yeah. When they said, you can't share a game, and, like, that. They hit them they with that mad shade. <laughs> Here's how we share a game on PS4. Oh, man, it just showed someone handing in person another game. <laughs> yeah. So, I read, I read, I read somewhere that uh, Norman Reedus is actually working with uh, Kojima. Yeah, and and Del Toro, and yeah. Toro. yeah. Yeah, like for like officially, like officially. Yeah. Now, I think it was gonna be. It's gonna be something new. It's gonna be something new, but it's probably whatever he's working on now. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't see if he, I can't work on Silent Hill. They could easily make another horror game. Yeah, you know? right. 
Yeah, absolutely. You it's, know. It's, I mean, it's well, there's a game out now that I, I keep hearing is basically like PT. I think it's uh, probably clear. People are saying this basically yeah. is PT, so if you like PT, play this. Yeah. And clear? Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Oh Ooh. That was tough shit, man. Which PC I liked, but I don't know if I play a whole game with it. Like, it was really creepy, and I did not understand it. Yeah. <laughs> Layers of Fear, I watched some gameplay. It's about a painter. Cool. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty weird looking. But I haven't played it. About it. No, I have not. Oh, that's on point. That's it. It's it's a uh, it's a new game, but it's uh, like a like a really it's supposed to be like a, a high production value game as far as like the sound and story writing and like environments and stuff. And, uh, yeah. It's only takes like four or five hours to play. Twenty bucks. <laughs> oh shoot! It's like a it's like a story. It's just narrative driven. It's right. Free roaming. He said, "Fuck off." Yeah, I can't. I can't wait to play it because I've just heard nothing but good about it. Like, I've never heard anything bad about it yet. Oh, that's on. That's on point. Fuck yeah! Damn, Scott. Back at it again with the long shots. <laughs> oh, I got a hat trick. Nice. Ah, oh, you got a hat trick. You're welcome. Every time I, someone scores, I'm just gonna say you're welcome. I got it from the book Armada, from the same, oh, by the way, I finished that book, uh, you know, from Ready Player One. You what, Red Armada? Oh! I read Armada. What do you think? I heard it wasn't as good. It's definitely not as good. Uh, the whole time, the kid, the kid is a little bitch. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, I mean, it's still, the ending, I wish it would have ended instead of having an epilogue and giving you, like, backstory of what happens to the characters after, you know, and shit. I wish it just would have ended. Yeah, is that ending? That, yeah. You no, know, like, the ending is dark. Oh, shit. And then it gives you this epilogue and it makes everything happy again. And I was like, man, why can't something just end? Yeah. I, I agree. It doesn't always have to be a happy ending, and it, it shouldn't have been. I, well, the way it actually ended, like the last chapter, was fucking perfect. That was the best part of the book. Because the fight scenes were just... Oh, they were so boring, man. I was driving around listening to it, and I'm like, I kept checking it. I was like, God, I still have fucking two hours left of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to go back, and uh, I'm actually... I've already started... Uh, rereading Ready Player One for the third fucking time. I need to read that. I've never read it, and I've heard so many good things about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you um, if you like Sword Art Online, which I know you made a reference to that. Yeah, did I uh, earlier? <laughs> I probably did. It no, it was on. We were on on film. You made ah. a reference to it one time. It, ah. Where like you live in another world, pretty much. Yeah. It's like that. It's cool. I think Ready Player One is better. I think better than Sword Art Online. I thought Sword Art Online is fine and everything. There's just almost no substance. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, it's like the concept. Online. The concept for like the uh, the uh, what do they call it in, in Ready Player One? The uh, world. Oh, that's all. Right. The Oasis. The Oasis. The whole concept of that thing is so cool. The way they describe it because. I think about the way he describes it, I'm like, that's exactly how, like, that kind of technology would be perceived, and I can definitely see it happen. Um, this gaming thing becomes so big that the internet becomes a part of it. <laughs> yep. I, uh, I read, I read, or I watched, I guess, uh, Ford Art first, and then read Ready Player One. Yeah. And the time I'm like, oh god, please don't take off this fucking head gear. <laughs> because in the show, you take off the headgear and you're like, and you die. Yeah. 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 So I was like, oh, don't take off the headgear. I kept thinking that the time. I was like, think it's really going to incorporate that? My, I, I really like Sword Art Online for the first mm -hmm. 13 episodes, at which point you should mm -hmm. just shut it off. Yeah, really, honestly, you should. Because it turns 
uh, dumb. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, I think Attack on Titan did the same thing. Oh my god, first, Attack on the Titan. The first 12 episodes yeah. was fucking perfect. And yeah. it just turns into, like, damn near nothing. Just meandering fucking a whole episode of some guy in a monologue. He fucking died! My friend! He's dead! What do I do? What do I do? Oh, oh Titan! Yeah, just Titan! <laughs> yeah, just Titan! Oh god, that's good. Ugh. Wait, Zack Attack saved it for us. Yeah, I saw that. Sorry. Yep. Um. Yeah, Sword Art, the first the first 12 are so fucking good. Did you watch any of the second, like, Sword Art 2? Sword Art 2? No, because I hated the... person, right? I hated the, I hated the, the second set of episodes so much. I was like, just fuck this. No. <coughs> and uh, I refuse to watch it. on Netflix, I could go watch it. Yeah. Hey, if you're a fan of anime, there's a new oh, yeah. one uh, that's actually just recently came on. Yeah? In Japan. That's uh, you, it's like you know, it's, oh god, no one it. It's what's it called? Si simulcasting from Japan. You know, like Crunchyroll with Funimation. Oh I yeah. On Crunchyroll, it's called Look. Erased. Yeah. Uh, it's fucking good. It's like the best, one of the best. Games I've ever seen. And I've seen plenty of them. Yes. Now I know it's 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 the it's the most hyped thing since fucking sliced bread. Uh, I started reading the Did manga before the enemy. What? He raced? No, uh, One Punch Man. Oh, One Punch Man, yes! I seen a, uh, I seen a damn, uh, mod for that one. Uh, I think it was Fallout. Fallout, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, they have, I, they I they started... Have at Walmart. Uh, my buddy Stan, the guy who was here today, the, the older dude, mm -hmm. um, he, yeah. he buys, like, every manga anime, like, he's... He has a fucking library in his house. Single dude, makes mad ducats, no bills, no nothing. Uh, yeah. So, you know, he's fucking got like $1,500 disposable income a month. Uh, and uh, so he buys everything. And he got me into One Punch Man, the manga, like about two months before the anime debuted. And uh, it was really, oh shit, yeah. Nice. And uh, yeah, so as soon as the anime came out, I started watching it. It was awesome. And then... And then it just fucking blew up like overnight, like everywhere, everywhere online. It's like one punch man. It's it fucking really good. Did. Yeah, but it, it's like, oh my gosh, like it is like the most popular anime of the season by far. Yeah, I would say I, honestly, I, 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 other than that, he raced. I'm not joking. Like, everyone is talking about that shit now. Is it in uh, English yet, or, or is it still Japan. subbed? No, no, it's casting from Japan. Yeah. So you, I'm, I've been watching it, and usually I don't like watching shit in subs. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big, you know, I mean, I know people uh, fucking, oh uh, shit. I know, I know a lot of uh, sticklers out there like you gotta watch your know, sub over dub, sub or die, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I mean, yes, I don't mind sub too much, but it's 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 like having to work a little bit with my show. And I don't get to, I don't get to watch the animation as much, you know. That's what I was about to say. It's anime yeah, it's art. True. I want to watch the art that's yeah. on the fucking screen, not read. It. But Fuck. with this, I'm trying to just get caught up, like catch up. I will. With Attack on Titan, the first time I watched it was with subs. And yeah. Didn't think of that. Oh god, dude, the, the s fucking Japanese on that is cool. Like, oh shit! It sounds like a female does the read voice. <laughs> they usually do. Most most uh, children in shows are actually female, almost like 100% of the time. 99.9. Uh, yep, like like little kids. It's a new land before time movie. Really. Sure is. <laughs> they stopped yeah, making. They stopped making those. Yeah. No, uh, no, they never stopped making. Them. That's what I'm yeah, saying. I'm like, <laughs> you say a new one as if they stopped making them. <laughs> oh, they I'm stopped saying. Them. Did they? they? Oh, this yeah, like they making them for a while. This is number like 18, 18. 14. It's number 14. What's it I called? I can name them all in order if you want. What's I actually don't called? know what this one is. It's something. It's something journey. Journey. Like journey, of journey of the friend. Journey of the friend or something like that. 
Uh, no, it doesn't have one of those names. Uh -uh, it is. Cowboy! It's like round for time journeys. That makes sense. I was watching them today with my mom, actually. I watched uh, The Stone of Gold. That is insane that you know that. I'm not even gonna oh, kid. Dude. <laughs> if I if I I told everyone if I was to get a tattoo, it would be a little bit like a good little thing. I'm honestly surprised, surprised you don't. I'm honestly surprised you don't have a tattoo yet. Mm -hmm. I just don't know if there's anything I would want other than Littlefoot on my body. Probably. That you know that's it's it's the thing that's why it took me so long to get one. Yeah, it's the thing that I grew up with my entire life. You know, yeah. I never stopped watching those. Even when I was in high school, I fucking watched yeah. that shit. That that's why I got the Dungeons and Dragons dice. It's like. Yeah. It's just something I do and will always do. Something I've always wanted to do is play Dungeons and Dragons. It's fun, but it's only as fun as the people you play it with. You know, I I yeah. played it a lot, and uh, I played with a lot of different you know parties and groups and whatnot. And you know, sometimes you play with some people that you just gel with, and sometimes you play with some people where you're just like, "What the hell am I doing here?" You know, you just mm -hmm. and like I've ha I've got friends who like I'm good friends with. I won't play D and D with them though, because our play styles just do not mesh. Period. Really? You know, I had I had a guy. We we played a lot. You know, I started really playing in high school, and there was a guy named Spencer. Cool dude. Uh, get along great. Wait, what was his name? Spencer Dixon. You probably know him. Oh, I know Spencer. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. working at the casino. Yeah. Um, great dude. You know, cool dude. We get along really awesomely, but we just I don't want to play D and D with him. We played D and D with him a lot because we shared a lot of same mutual friends, and the guy who hosted was like one of his best friends so he played pretty much every time we played and you know he just got really extra like we have fun with it you know it's about having fun but he got yeah. really silly with it where it's like okay whatever like you know okay you're all in the end you know and you see a guy skulking in the corner what do you do he's like oh i throw a fireball and kill everybody you know just like you have to take it you know yes it's fun but there is a cer there is a certain level of seriousness you have to take with it you know, yeah. you, it is about playing a story, playing a role in something, and to just oh. do something like that, either A, everyone has to be on board with it just, with just being totally off the wall chaotic with it, or B, you just can't play with people like that. And that, that's, but that's me, oh. you know. I left my beer in the freezer too long, and when I opened it, it's super gross. Nice and chill, bro. When I opened it, it was nice, but this one, while I was pouring it. No need to add ice. Oh. Uh, so, uh, I was, a, I, I, I was listening to uh, an episode of Giant Beast Cast, which is like a cast, but East Coast. Yeah. Game, game, and they played a tabletop game, um, which just has like role playing elements, basically Dungeons and Dragons style, yeah. something like that. But it's called Fiasco, and it uses these pre made, like, uh, um, uh Characters. Like Cohen Brothers, like it's like Cohen Brothers style scripts, is what it is. You oh shit! You play characters, uh -huh. and you roll dice, and there's a there's like a thing you print out, print out or whatever, look it up, and you get visually whatever. Oh Most of it you make shit! Up yeah. On the spots. Most of it you just make up, and it guides you on like what what kind of things to do and which categories to do. Yeah. It's, and I will listen to them play it, and it sounds like something would be so much fun to play. Yeah. I remember, I remember you told me about that, Scott. It almost reminded me of the, the card game, Gloom. Yeah. I don't so know if this you ever is, played that. It's a, it with it's, Will. They, I forget what they say it is, but it's like, they said it's basically just tabletop role-playing rules. There's like the standardized rules, and they said they just use the same rules and create a different game. Yeah, there's a lot of things to do that. Not on target. Um, I, the thing is, like, I've never played. So there's like a set of rules you can look up for that game. They said it goes with other games too. Most likely it uses either Pathfinder or D20 rules would be the the main ones they would use. Probably D20 Probably would be my game. guess. I've I've never played D and D. I don't know. I don't even. I wouldn't even know where to start. You know what I mean? Right. Oh, I missed it. But I've always, it's something that I've always thought, man, that seemed like fun if you had the great group of friends, you know, sit around 
I've always had that, that fantasy of eating fucking pizza, drinking beer, and playing beer. Yeah, you think? Yeah. Well, but shit, maybe it's something I'll have to set up for you sometime. Yeah. Just, just a little one-off sure. night things, like me, you, Scott, Brett, yeah. you know. Be a bunch of noobs, sure. which would make it cool, you know, no one would have to really, you know, everybody would be kind of in the same level of play. Yeah. You know, Robbie. And, I mean, like, here's the thing, the character that you use, do you use the same character, like, over and over? It's up to you. I mean, we, we tend to make different characters between different campaigns. You know, different stories because they take place in different worlds. But no, some people will just make the same character over and over again, and you know, play the play this play in the same way, and you know, it's it's really up to you. But no, I tend to make a different character every time. But you know, some people have a stock. Some people have a stock character. Like you know, I like to play this orc named Brog who has a penchant for you know alcohol and things like that, and just and whenever they play a game, they'll just. They'll just make that character. And you know, it's it's an RPG, you know, you level up and get experience and fuck I block. Just by just by rolling like rolling oh, back nice. to Yeah, like like um the, the, the game is basically brought up into two categories. The parts where you roleplay and the parts of combat. Roleplay is you being your character, saying what they would say, you know, acting as it were. Um, Even doing accents and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, it's your character. You do whatever the hell you want. You know, if you want them to talk with a slur or a speech impediment or whatever, or maybe be kind of dumb and speak in broken, you know, broken dialect or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you use, like, skills. Like, you'll have, like, a, a set of skills. Like, I'm good at bluffing and lockpicking and sneaking. So, you know, you'll use that stuff out of combat, typically. Uh, you know, to, to do different things. Like, you know, we gotta get into, we gotta get into this guy's lair, you know, he's got these guards. Do we just beat him up? Do we... And then you, and then you roll, and depending yes. on, like... Right, like, you would have, like, let, are, let's say, like based on your stats, yeah, level, and stuff, related to bluff, so you'll... ...roll a dice, 1 through 20, and add that to your plus 5, and... Then whoever's DMing, whoever is basically playing but not player characters, um, will will have some sort of a score or something and be like, "You succeeded. He believes you, or he doesn't believe you, or whatever." Based on the die that you roll. Based on the die that you roll, yeah. Like, yeah, like, let's say I have a guy who's very, very good at picking up someone when they're lying. Like, he's just got a naturally good insight. He can just tell when someone's lying to him. So you you try to lie to him. Let's say you have a, a plus five to your to your lying, to your bluff, mm -hmm. and you roll your dice. Hot damn! And you roll your dice. Hot so damn. so you you roll the dice. You get a Hot you damn. get a ten. You get a ten, and then you got your plus five. So your total score and your attempt to lie to him here. You say the lie, and then you roll, and it's like okay, I rolled a fifteen to bluff, and then I'll have a little thing of it. You know his his you know ability to detect lying is called uh, insight. And he's got a plus nine, so I I roll a twenty. I roll a twenty, and I get a let's say I only roll a two, so my nine plus two is an eleven, which is less than your fifteen. So I would say he totally believes you that lie you just told him. Gotcha. Yeah, like that. As, as as much information as I just had to throw at you, that is a a, a yeah. basic way of doing it. You pretty much just have to, it's, it's basically, you have to beat their stats and their stats and use your advantages and skill sets against the other, I guess not other players, right? You don't play against the, the there's, the no, the players, the, pla the, the players are a party and then there's the dungeon master. The dungeon master play is, plays everything else. He plays your, your adversaries, your NPCs, people you need to get quests from or help or people you need to kill. And, you know, so that the, you, as a player, your responsibility is just to make the character and play the character. No. And the Dungeon Master's job is to craft a world and a story and an adventure in which to entertain you. The Dungeon Master has the hardest job because they have to, they have to really plan out, you know, maps and monsters and fights and, you know, what people might say and be able to really be... You need to really have good improvisational skills to be a dungeon master. Or at least gotcha. it helps to be. Now, obviously you don't need to have them. Anyone can do it. But it, it helps to be able to do that. 
idea for sure. Yeah. Who who does? I mean, would I know anyone that? Is, are you a dungeon master ever? Or? Well, I mean, anyone can, but I typically yes. Uh, in our groups, because dungeon mastering is so complicated and time consuming and whatnot. Um, in our typical groups, uh, in, in the group that I play in frequently, um, there's me, uh, my cousin Brian, who was here tonight, my buddy Jeff, who was here tonight, um, Corey, who was here tonight, Amber, and then Jeff's wife. That's our normal crew. And in those crews, me and Jeff typically trade off dungeon mastering. Like, I'll run a story, and then he'll run a story, and back and forth. So we don't have as much of a workload between the two of us. Um, gotcha. But right now, he is dungeon mastering he's doing his big story which will which will last several game sessions you know six seven eight nine ten plus game sessions you know quite a bit um and then i also have a second group that recently started that's me my wife Corey, um a guy named chris who was not here tonight and then uh stan the older guy and in that one he is dming and the reason i really liked i got into that second group with stan is because he's an older guy and he's been playing a lot longer than the rest of us, obviously. So it was just a really good experience to see how somebody else does it. Because, you know, me and Jeff pretty much DM about the same way. Um, whereas he puts a lot more emphasis on story. Um, so it really feels like we're living and playing in a, in a fleshed out world. It's, it's pretty nifty to see uh, a different play style like that. Because gotcha. we tend to do uh, a little more heavier on the combat, like, you know, you know, exploring a dungeon and, you know, killing a big monster and stuff like that. Now, right. do you have to create the story or do you just get the books? You can do either. Um, typically, you will create the story. Um, but they sell modules, which are just completely crafted stories that basically leaves very little work to the DM. Gotcha. He just reads it pretty much. More or less. He reads it and then he has to improvise and and stuff on a few little things, but for the most part, uh, a lot of the major elements are pre-planned. Ah, shit. Oh, shit. Nice. Um, oh, shit. Oh, shit. I didn't get too far into that. Um, so, if you were to get a Dungeon Master, like, you know, book, uh -huh. or, or whatever, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know what you call those. Well, initially, initially you get the player's handbook, which teaches you the basics of how to play the game and how to make your character. Um, and then there's the Dungeon Master's book, which teaches you more about actually crafting uh, a world if you're DMA. Um, however, um, the, the basics of a lot of those books are free on their website. Like, probably about, a, yeah, about, about half of the content. Enough content to play the game. Uh, is free on their website. And obviously you can pull on him pretty easily. Yeah. Not that I would advocate piracy. <laughs> we all do. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> now, so, would it be, unless, I guess if, I guess if you weren't a good story, like a writer, Story ah. Oh shit, man. If you want a good, like, you know, writer, story huh. creator, you would just get those books. Yeah, the modules. Like, you like, used to see them at Walden's. Yes, yes. right. Online. Yeah, or you can go online and get ones people have crafted themselves, yeah.
Oh no, no! I think this might be our first loss, guys. <laughs> I might be. We're still one map, we haven't played yet. Yeah, I, I know. know, right? We haven't played the first two, we haven't played the third one. Which is my favorite. Mm -hmm. I think it might be mine, too. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> are they? Good, are they yeah, worth? Yeah. I, I thought about trying to. Oh my gosh! I've never had Korean barbecue before. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> Those flaming hot ones, though. Yeah. So, they're hotter than the. Uh, they are indeed flaming hot. There's that, and there's roasted habanero. Oh man, I try that. Ones. Flaming hot are way worse. At least to me. They're, they're called Lay's Flaming Hot? Yeah, they come. They, I've only seen them in little tiny bags. They come in big variety of packs. Ash! The only ones I've seen are like the cheese and smoked beer or whatever. Yep, that comes in it too. And then I've seen the smoked gouda and thai. Yeah, it's just the only taste that makes our game of damn on it. They smell like you, but they don't taste like it. Uh -uh. They smell yeah. just like it, so I love me some gouda, though. Fuck, man, these guys are fucking starting to hurt one. Yeah, I gotta say, out of, out of the two we've done so far, that I do not really care for this one. epic save of the game. Well, I can't say it'll be an ongoing thing, but uh, maybe some night where our schedules align properly, we'll uh, we'll do a D and D night or something. I'll uh, I'll DM it to uh, avoid responsibility on anyone else. <laughs> hey, is this the uh, this is it? So it's just it's goals on two sides. Is that it? Yep, it's double goal. Yeah. Oh man. That's rough. There's like a thing in the middle that blocks the ball, but it's split. Yeah. What? There you go. Oh, look at that.
That guy's not even playing. Oh, God, I hit it backwards. Oh, yeah, that was <laughs> I was like, no, oh, oh damn it, and I still missed it. Oh, God, no. Back at it again with the white bombs. <laughs> So close. Yeah. Damn. God. <laughs> back at it again with a shot on goal. God, back at it again with a shot on goal. Yeah, uh, there's a guy, like, oh, I see him on his Facebook. He might have, like, a YouTube channel or whatnot. His, his name, or what he goes by, is called Bombs Away. And he just does. He takes normal fans and videos and turns them into like dubstep house tracks. A normal sound or just normal? He did a pizza post? guy. He did a pizza guy in the video. And like, this one. He did the damn Daniel, but he turned it into a song. Oh, house. He's like, ah. oh gosh, I'm really cool. <laughs> hey, did you guys see it? that uh, Devon Hawkins was in the front of the commercial in Quincy? Yeah, this is fucking so awesome. Guys. It's like the best. Hey, we're back yeah. on Penny Yeah, Portal Lands too. <laughs> Thanks he for said, stopping man, by. Sit, he said, man, I'm just sitting here drinking shit. Shit. I don't. I don't worry about. I don't stress over no, no petty prices. <laughs> <laughs> and he said they even got these little ass petty chairs. <laughs> this is tiny oh, ass looking chairs. And uh, but people were like, I'm never shot here again. This is bullshit. What? It's funny. I don't yeah. Bullshit. Seriously. Yeah. Some people are just the fucking uptight and down. Yeah, he didn't do anything wrong. He got picked up. Yes. Yeah, Who cares? Yeah, Scooter is the one who says catch a ride. Sorry, I'm streaming, so occasionally I'll, I actually had had some commentators, so I had to say something. Oh, yeah. Wow. Right. Yeah, Scott, earlier when I when I saw you walking down, that was that was the old Borderlands reference. Oh. I was okay. like, catch a ride. Catch a ride. <laughs> it's, where, it's where the cars <laughs> live. Get you one. <laughs> Yeah, this is where the car is. Oh, that's on. That's on point. Oh, oh, fuck. oh yeah. The hatchet. Oh, yeah. Potato pie. Three. Yeah, Brett was trying to get me to play Borderlands. Dose. Jack collection. I've already played both of them. I know. I, I, I the same here. Yeah, I just I didn't hear the pre sequel was that great, so I kind of skipped it. Um, that was cool. Was it? If you could be, know. if you I'm could be claptrap, I mean, <laughs> if you're a fan, man, if you're a fan of Borderlands, like, I'm a, hey, I'm a huge fucking fan. I never did finish it, but I did that like that. I started the uh, Telltale game and I liked it. <laughs> oh no, I shot that internet. Oh shit. I, I, I like the Borderlands games enough, but I'm just, I'm not a massive fan of them. Yeah, I, I was a big fan of the first one. The second one, it just got big. Yeah. By the time you did quest, you were just so over leveled. Yeah. I, I was just ready to be done. Ooh. I was ready to be done with it. Yeah. But uh, Scott finished it. No, Scott finished it. Fuck! 
God dang it. <laughs> 14 seconds, boys. Yeah, we got it. We're fine. Uh, well, I'm in a group. Sorry. Uh, or else I would. We're doing some threes. Will some guy say 1v1 me, bro? <laughs> no, yes, yeah, we, could, we could join. Oh, Shit! No. Oh my god! Damn, Daniel. Back at it again with the white guy. Right. Right in. Right in. Right. Nah. We win. I'm getting a lot of toppers. Like I've gotten a topper like after every game practically. You get they're yeah. not they're now like uncommon and rare and stuff like Yeah, that. you get uncommon ones or rare ones. Uh, Pokemon cards. Pocket mom. Yeah. Bucket the month stuff. Uh, actually, I'm gonna back out. We're just gonna play. I yeah, wanna play let's some back norms. out. Yeah, let's go do some norms. Let's go play some norms. Appreciate the uh, the views and likes and all that. Uh, either way, though. What? Are we in a game? I'm in a game. Uh, You're in a yeah. match. Oh, I back out. I, did, I, I assumed it would pull us all out. Mm -hmm. You no, actually have to back doesn't. out. I'm right back. BRP. Big river bend? Yes. BRB. Just around the river bend. Appreciate it. Strawberry Appreciate fields forever. Is that what one that is? No. Just around the river bend. It's from Pocahontas. I look once more. Just around the river bend. Beyond the shore. Something, something, see. It's all the time. Just around the river bend for me. What? Yeah, dude, I love my Pokehantas. Oh, so I'm guessing you liked Avatar because it's the same fucking movie. No, you see, I didn't like Avatar because I had already watched it when I watched Pocahontas. Thank you. <laughs> I, I thought this. I thought the spectacle of Avatar was fantastic. Don't think it's that good of a movie. It's all right, I guess. But Pocahontas. It's the same. Thing. Yeah. Which I mean, even Pocahontas is Romeo and Juliet. You know. I mean. I mean, it's yeah. it's a it's a uh, to to say to quote Beauty and the Beast. You know, it's a tale as old as time. Uh, mm -hmm. So I get it. So it was just because of that that I was just like, Ugh. I don't I don't yeah. care for the story because the story I've heard. And I only care about the story if I care about the characters. And I don't give a goddamn about these characters. No. You can tell me a story I've heard before if you introduce new characters that I give a shit about. Yep. yep. But, but uh, I mean, uh, Sigweave did not do it for me that time. Huh? That's for damn sure. Oh, Sigourney Weaver. And, you know, Sigweave, man, yeah. I, I, unfortunately, she's just, I don't, know, I don't want to say she's sold out, but it's like... Oh, I, she what she did recently? well. I think she did these great movies, you know, Alien and fucking Ghostbusters and whatnot. She she put herself on the map as this, you know, great female heroine, sci-fi, you know, personal uh, personality. And unfortunately, now they just they just ham fist her into any sci-fi thing, like who's Sigourney Weaver? Dur -dur -dur. Wink, yeah. wink, nod, nod. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, it, it's just like the complete opposite of Julianne Moore. I look at all the great movies Julianne Moore has made in her late years. You know what I mean? Like yeah. She's still still pumping out great. She, she has her handful of shit that she's done, but I mean, ever since Boogie Nights, that chick's been doing good movies. And then yeah. Sig Lee's who made, from what I can tell, she's probably done a bunch. But all I can think of are Alien and. I guess all the aliens. I love them all, all but especially the first alien. And I I like the first one way more than the second one. The, the second one's an okay movie, but eh. I just don't I don't think James Cameron is that good of a director. You know, and that's the thing is like anytime any any time I any time I say I don't like any time I say I don't like aliens, people are like you're just hating on James Cameron. It's like no, I don't. I'm fucking indifferent about James Cameron. I, I am I'm indifferent. I I absolutely love a every alien, of, obviously other than Alien vs Predator. Yeah. But I love every alien. I like I like David Fincher's third one. No one like that. I love it. Um, but I, I, the first one's my favorite. Always gonna be. But James Cameron, I don't. 
I think Terminator 2 is probably his only, like... That's his, that's his movie, you know, that's his saving grace. Yeah. For sure. Because I don't, Avatar wasn't that good, but Titanic is just a normal love story. People are like, oh, well, money, look at how much money he's made off of them. They're too top grossing. Well, that doesn't make it a good movie. Right, exactly. I hate people that try to bring up money. It's like, you know what mm -hmm. fucking money movie was fucking profitable as shit? Like, Sinister 2. You know, yeah. and fucking yeah, dime a do dime a do getting people in there. Yeah. Well, and not even that. Dime a dozen horror movies that get released today that are PG-13 jump scare, jump scare BS. It's like mm -hmm. they make these movies on a budget of like three million, and and then you know it rakes in you know twenty million. So yeah, it's a fucking gangbuster. It made you know, oh. it made seven, oh. eight, nine, ten times its its value. So when a movie comes out like Avengers that costs like three hundred million to make, but it makes a billion. It's like, well, it's only getting like a three times return, so technically, you know, dumb shit horror movie was more profitable. Yes, and that's that's actually something I do like. Okay. I, I can't, I'm completely agreeing with you. I think there's some really cool cheesy horror movies. Like, Unfriended, loved it. I thought that was the coolest concept. Everything was on a computer screen. It was awesome. It was also made out cheaply. Yeah. It didn't have to do very well to get... Right. To get its money back. And that, the Blum, the Blumhouse, that's who makes them. Uh, I think it's owned by Jason Blum. I'm not too sure if he owns that. He will only, he'll only pump like if it's over five thousand. He won't pump any more money into it. It has to be made with under five thousand dollars. And that's how James Wan got his start. And I mean, that to me, that dude's the master of horror, like modern horror, with Saw and Insidious and The Conjuring. You see, I and even Insidious too. I, you see, I Insidious, love those. Those Insidious, and The Conjuring. I just, I'm not a fan. They're just, they just feel so generic. Really? To the me, thing they about do. Insidious that I loved was the fact that there was no fake jump scares. If they were jump scares, they were actual fucking freaky demons. You know, there wasn't like a cat, like a Paranormal Activity or something like that. It, I know how. I see what you mean. It could definitely feel cheesy, but. I don't know. Uh, something I, about his style. I love it. I, I, I want to see, I you know, like, I love Saw. Saw is a masterpiece. Yeah. I'll, I'll... Oh, for sure. For sure. First Saw. Um, yeah. With, uh, you know, like, you know, the Babadook, you know, fantastic, uh, fantastic yeah. movie. <laughs> Fucking, uh... It's scary. <laughs> um, I, I haven't seen Crystal The Witch. I was so I, scared I of that movie, and I, I just was laughing. I want to see The Witch. I hear it's oh, so, I hear it's really good. It's not like you would expect. It, I mean, it's really. No, that, and that's what I've heard. I've heard it's. You know, that's why it's so good. Is that it's. Yeah. It's very. Um, it's all about the setting. You know, it's about the the it's, atmosphere. It's about the atmosphere, and it's honestly, it, it's the fact, it's the family drama that is the most unsettling thing, because they're trying to decide. Is there actually a witch? They're big Christians. Is there an actual right. witch? Is it someone in the family? And it's like watching this family be torn apart, and that's what's unsettling. It's them turning on each other. It's just, ugh. It gets under your skin. Yeah. And the tone of it, it's dark. Ooh. Yeah. You'll enjoy it, if, because it isn't. And that's why people are like, I was so pumped for this, and it's not scary, blah, blah, blah. No, you're not, ex I mean... You're, you're going in expect, you're going about, expecting, you know... Annabelle and shit like that, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. like, and and I think that's just black. It's just yep. schlock. Are you guys, are I'm you guys ready. excited for the uh, Clover Cloverfield Lane. Oh, I think it looks good. Lane. Number I, one, dude. Did you see? I don't know if anyone knows who Dan Trachtenberg is. That's who's directing it. Mm -hmm. it sounds familiar. He, he he's ever done. This is his first movie, but he did do a portal, like the video game. He did a portal like short film. It's called Portal No Escape. Look it up on YouTube. Right. It's awesome. Right. Mm -hmm. it's fucking cool. I haven't and seen it, but I heard. JJ Abrams seen that and was like, "Yeah, no, this guy needs to make my next movie." Yeah, I I am excited for it just because it, it looks like it's got you know it's gonna have a hint of a monster movie in it, which I'm I'm a big fan of anyway. I'm a big fan of kaiju and that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, <laughs> um, first off. John Goodman, you put him in a movie, and I'll and I'll and I'll at least give it a shot right out the gate. The St. Louis kid himself, John Goodman. Well, uh, he, can I, I tell know. you guys something yep. I read about it is that uh, I don't know if they're hinting at the monster being in it. I think that is like supposed to trick you into thinking that, mm -hmm. but um, especially because it shares the name. But um, 
I heard that what I read was that he had a whole bunch of ideas that were set to take place in his universe. In the universe of, of Cloverfield. Cloverfield. Yes. And um, Super 8 was going to be one of them. But it, yep. when they called Steven Spielberg in to write part of it with him, because the, the script got cut and edited into another script, what happened. And they made Super 8. I and, see. And, uh, and that's why it wasn't Spielberg a Cloverfield had to have movie. kids in his movies. Yeah, Super 8, I didn't understand the tonality of it. It was just like, I thought it was going to be... Well, after reading that it, it was like two scripts put together, it made more sense because yeah. it felt like Steven Spielberg and J.J. Abrams went straight down the middle and made a movie. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I, like. that's what, and I love it. I love it. I like it. I love J.J. Abrams' throwback style to pretty much every movie ever because he never makes an original movie. Yeah. Uh, other than, I mean, even Cloverfield is just a rip-off. He is doing uh, Ready Player One. Steven Spielberg is. Yeah, that's what I said. Um, He's saying Abrams doesn't do original yeah, yeah. stuff. Oh, J.J. Abrams, Abrams doesn't do original yeah, stuff. Sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm excited for Steven. Because it's got kids in it. Steven Spielberg won't work with the, won't do any movies. But also, got a damn because kid. they said, because they said Steven Spielberg is the guy to work with when you have to yeah. get a bunch of franchises to sign off on something. They said that's the only yeah. way Roger Rabbit got made. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, and it, you've read Ready Player One. It, think of how many... It's like got all the references to 80, 80 yep. and shit like that. Yeah, the whole movie is stuff. Yeah. And you can't cut it out. If you can't cut it out, you're making a bad movie. If you cut that yeah. stuff out of that book, you're not making the movie. Yeah. I'm excited to see how where they go. Did you? They got two people cast. Olivia Cook as, uh, as the main chick, Artemis. And then you got mm -hmm. what's, uh, Ben Middleton as Norman, as the bad guy. Are you guys uh, ready? I'm ready. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, yeah, start with me. start one right now. Okay. Standard. 3v3. But uh, I'm really excited about I love the Cloverfield series. The book and the movie. Um, mm. And like just the stuff that happens in that university is fleshed out in his other work. Because mm. yeah. there's some stuff that bleeds over. And he's. Mm -hmm. But he, he's written a lot of. He's either written or worked with a lot of people who've done bad things too. Like yeah. TV shows get canceled. Yeah. Oh, for, yeah. Look at all of those TV shows. They've either but, turned to shit or just are shit. But you know what? Like, even though they were shit, I liked them. I must be his I fan base because I liked Revolution. I liked it. I liked Revolution. Yeah. I liked Flash Forward. I liked. I liked, I liked the Flash first Forward season Forward. of Revolution. I I thought basically once they bought the I power the back on. I got better. But. I f I felt like once the power came back on, that was like why. Well, the power never. The power didn't stay on. And yeah, they but found out, they found out that only the government had one of those rockets to make it run. I know, but it's like, it, here's our whole catch: how do people live without power? And then they're like, oh, but wait, there's well, actually a way to get power. Oh yeah, so I guess that that discovery like really the show for because I kind yeah. of assumed it from the beginning. I knew that there was like a supernatural, uh, like, and they're not only supernatural, but supernatural and, like hacker of whatever sci-fi style yeah. you know, made up. I knew that it was a little bit too big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it was like they have this okay. USB drive that can make a computer work. Like somehow it, it can shut off the nanotechnology in the air and it's yeah. stopping the time. Oh shit. Uh, oh. oh. That was, that was so... The nanotechnology starts to... Uh, it, it starts to gain a consciousness, so it doesn't have consciousness. And, and at the same time, it seems like maybe they're going to start introducing powers to people to help fix what we do. But we got to make sure we get pulled out. Yeah. I got three things. Talking about Revolution, have you watched the other version of Revolution? Uh, the uh, I have not. Uh, um, Amber watched it, and she said it was. She said it was really good. The 100, cool. the 100, as in the new 100, or like the original series? The 100. Yeah. Okay, that's the new one. That's the new one. Yeah, it's really good. Like I, I honestly, you're looking for a good, like, post-apocalyptic show, sci-fi. It's it's, it's, it's not like kids or something, though, isn't it? Yeah, like these kids, yeah. these felons get sent back down to Earth after it's been like. Been happy, like, I guess, I don't know, 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 I don
uninhabitable. I don't know. It has to pay off. The story has to pay off. It has to have to pay off. And it is, I mean, they're on their third season right now. But, uh, it's different. It's just a, I didn't think it'd be that good, especially doing on, like, the CW. Yeah. It's good. It's very good. I hate getting into weird sci-fi shows because they'll get canceled on me. Uh, actually, this is show. not going to be canceled. <laughs> People love the shit out of it. So yeah, that, that, don't, that don't matter, no. People got to be more love it. They got to spend money on it. They got to watch it. Yeah, it's true. They, 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 they got to not, they gotta <laughs> not torrent it. Yeah. I, it's a CW, though. I think it's like pretty little wires. I don't know if this is true, but I heard that, I heard that uh, there was going to be like an eight episode like uh, reboot of uh, Firefly. Whoa, really? I, that's what I read somewhere, but I don't know if it's actually instructional or anything. Fuck. Whiff. Oh, God, I hit you yeah. yeah, it'd be like a one-off, they said, like eight episodes. I thought they did fine with Serenity. I just, I mean, I, as much as I love Firefly, I just kind of was like, all right, they did fine with Serenity. I don't think they need anything else, dude. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like they do. I still... I think but cool it's one of those shows that the right? fans just clamor and clamor and clamor for. Yeah, this is true. And for for good reason. It's great. It's fantastic. I just I just thought, okay, well we got Serenity. It wouldn't be a good time. You know what? Watching all the episodes of uh South Park Rackica is like the most best feeling ever for me for watching a sci fi show because I got to watch like the beginning of the episode. Yeah, it has such a cool ass fucking premise and such a cool ass plot. I never, I never got into Battlestar. It's good. And, and, and the thing is, like, I watched the first season, second season, and thinking, yeah, I like it. I care about these characters, but the acting sucks, and I'm not really happy with the sets. It's, like, it's, it's definitely cheesy. And then all of a sudden, the third season starts, and the episodes are an hour long, and the you know, acting is like amazing, and the special effects are fucking perfect, and it's like, oh my god, what happened? I guess I got picked up by Paramount right after that, or something, and uh, like the show became ten times better for the last five seasons. It's so good. Really? Yeah, it's amazing. Struggle, struggle through the first two seasons. The first two seasons are like... It's good, and you're like, oh, I hope it doesn't get wor any worse, though, because I'm just watching it, you know, and then the season, and the very first episode is, like, got a Paramount logo, and it's just clean, and like, oh, this is neat, it's in the wine screen, and then, <laughs> then you see, like, the acting is really good, and the prosthetics are really good, and you're like, what the fuck am I watching? The acting is over the top, and you're like, whoa. It's like they were making a movie. Got it. Uh, that's a good ass show. Um, you said you like kaiju movies. I gotta, I have to get your opinion on uh, Pacific Rim. Uh, personally, I liked it. I thought it was good. Uh, I, was I do too. I love it. I've watched it like five times. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 he wants to make it, though, I think. I don't it, think he does. It was at that. I don't think he does. I think they've, they've taught, there's been talk of a prequel, but I think that's okay. just more of a, I think that's just, the money man, the money people, because although yeah, it was sure. not really that great in the states, it made a shitload overseas. For sure, yeah, yeah. definitely international made a bunch. I enjoyed it. it. That's the only reason they were in talks for a sequel because if it was just domestic, it did not do very well. No, I no, it didn't. Nope. It, like a movie that didn't, that, like, didn't do well at all, mm -hmm. and uh, probably the only reason it saved it was. International was Edge of Tomorrow, and that movie was fucking awesome. Oh my no gosh, yes, it. man, that's a fucking like that, that was good. Great. That's a good movie, yeah. man. You know, it's uh, you know, it that's like the the best movie that people weren't watching at the time. Yeah, it was because the new Transformers came out, made of extinction. And the marketing for it was terrible. No one knew what the hell it was. It just it was like yeah. sci-fi Tom Cruise movie. Yeah. People expected Oblivion, which I like Oblivion too. So I did too. But I, I thought it Oblivion was cool as shit. But I thought it was okay. I liked it. Yeah, I liked Oblivion a lot. I thought it was gorgeous for one. Did you ever see Moon? I thought. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like moon. Yeah. Last thing I always felt. I always felt. Uh, I always felt oblivion, which is too much like moon. It is too. Yeah. Thank you. Or the illusion. Or uh, the magician. No, what's that? The prestige. Oh yeah. Came at the same time as. Uh, came at the same time as. Uh, the machinist or the illusionist? Yeah. The illusionist. Yeah. There was the prestige and the illusionist. But yeah, there it's pretty much the same type of whereas you know more people have problems than others. Yeah. But I guess problems are what's with it, but the movie's based around. Uh, oh, what? Sun shining. Oh, have you guys watched uh, that Turbo Kid that's on Netflix? Thing? I heard it's really good. It's really good. It's really good. Yeah, I don't I, know if it's I've, Canadian or New Zealand, but it's really I good. know it's like. I, I believe it's uh, New Zealand. I think it's New Zealand. I think yeah, it's New Zealand. New Zealand. Where you can always tell it was made. New Zealand because it says New Zealand and the New Zealand production. I have not but, seen uh, it. I've heard nothing but good things. Movie. It's like it's the, yeah, it's it's like like the road warrior with bicycles. It's like Fallout. Yeah. It it's I've like heard Fallout. It's weird as shit. It's the comedy. It's, it plays on the tropes. Uh, Fuck. Oh no. Post apocalyptic sci fi. Yeah. Yeah. Survivor sci fi. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah I, I've heard it's really good. Unnecessary gore, lots of dark humor, I and mean, then a little bit, I mean, not a ton of gore, but just random stuff. Totally, totally off topic. I was mentioning, uh, I don't know what movie it was. I said, I said it was, I couldn't, man, ass. Uh, no, about, uh, tonality in movies. My biggest gripe with a movie that is just, people just love and fall over and have a, have a nostalgia for that I think is kind of bleh and really couldn't find a tone is fucking, uh, Lost Boys. Oh, I love the Lost Boys. Don't I, ever do that to me. And people love the Lost Boys. Don't do it to me. But, but man, I it's will just stop like talking to you forever. <laughs> but it's just, but it's just like it can't make up its mind if it wants to be, you know, nice dark adult horror vampire story, you know, with a plot, or if it wants to be Scooby Doo yeah. mysteries. Yep. It's, you know, it just, uh, it just can't make up its mind. It's What's all that? Over the place, and I love it for that. And it was because I think I, I think I love it so much because I've watched it when I was a child. And yeah, and that's why I said you know yeah, people have a people have a real strong nostalgia for it. It's and, just and yeah, I get it that. is nostalgia. It's just nostalgia. Uh, it's not. A, it's not. It's one of my favorite movies of all time, especially horror movies. Yeah. But ooh, oh yeah 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 yeah. Um, it's just nostalgia. Just like the Goonies is just nostalgia. Yeah. yeah no. Like, the Goonies, the Goonies is not a great movie. movie. It's the style. Oh, yeah. But I love it. Movies. I love that movie. Like, I will watch it any time. <laughs> and see, I think that's my problem is I, I didn't get, um, didn't really oh, get too into part. Lost Boys until later. Oh, shit. Hot on target. Oh, oh shit. Uh, yeah, I watched that shit when I was a child. So I... Yeah. Oh. I, might, I had to cover my eyes whenever Keith was settling them, get that motherfucker in the head. <laughs> uh, other than that, I mean, every other part I love. One of my favorite movies is. I, I love Robocop. Oh, yeah. yeah. That That's continue. by no means a good movie either. <laughs> no, no I, honestly, obsolete. I, I think Robocop is damn near clo a close uh, contender for what can, can, can be considered a perfect movie. Think so? Yeah, the original yeah. Robocop. Yeah, it's got plot. It's got plot. It's got, plot. it's got subtext. It's got subtlety. It's got humor. It's that's got the action. The thing about movies is it's all subjective, and you can like yeah. whatever you like. Oh, nice! Ah. I only have two percent food. Um, you can like whatever the hell you like, and no one can tell you differently. Right. Sure. You can. People can, we can sit here and say a movie is shit, but that's not up for you to decide. Someone right. can like that movie. It's right. Like music. Right. I think really what it is is you can admit a, the downfalls of a, a product that you didn't make and still enjoy it and love it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you don't have to defend it or anything. So no. you like it because yeah. you like it for any a number of reasons. Right. Yep. 
I mean, uh, I like plenty of shitty movies. I thought Horrible Bosses 2 was funny as shit, and it was very not well received. So, it was funny as shit. I do agree with the Oscars and think, you know, yeah, for the most part, I thought they should. Oh, yeah, there needs to be more black Oscars, I know. Exactly. <laughs> well, actually, this year really did not make a lot of sense for me. Like, this, I, people, you know, you see about the white people in the band and saying, you, you all need to quit complaining. If you all wanted it, you should have made better movies and stuff. That's not the case this year, guys. Like, they made Creed. Michael B. Jordan was out fucking standing. Uh, uh, they made straight out of Compton. Like, the guy who played Easy E was perfect. The guy, and then Idris Elba and Beast of No Nation was perfect. There's no reason why they couldn't have at least been nominated. I'm not saying they had a win. It's real weird. Yeah. But they could have been nominated. But you instead, know, they, no they nominate a person like Christian Bale for The Big Short, which I love The Big Short, but he's like the worst part of the movie. He's not good. You know, really with the... Uh, um, what was the thing you said about before, Chris before Christian Bale? Uh, straight out of Compton? <sighs> Maybe. I, you were saying Michael something? B. Jordan and Creed? Yeah, yeah, okay. That was... Um, uh, oh no, never. Leo DiCaprio. About it being Leo's year. Leo. Um, yes. I think it is. I think he's going to win. But <laughs> I, honestly, I don't. I think he's a fine actor. I don't think he's a great actor. I think he is in a lot of amazing films and yeah. he is elevated by being around so much other stuff. He's a, he's a, he's a solid actor around magnificent actors that elevate him or, up. Or magnificent, just the uh, crew. Right. Like the Revenant, all he did was grunt. Yeah. He did torture porn through the whole movie. It was yeah. torture porn. It's, that's it. It's, you know, it, uh, I I read a review that, that made a good point that you know in Django, you know, the part where he cuts his hand and they use it and it's yada yada. Yeah. Really. That 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 gets talked about. That gets raved about. So basically, the Revenant is just Leo cutting himself over and over again. That the, they they said he's a he's a 15 year old. You know, uh, goth girl saying, "Look at me, look at me. Watch me cut yeah. myself." <laughs> now, the only thing. Oh, that was really good. The, the the only thing I will say that I, it, there's there's a couple things that I've absolutely loved. You know, what's even good with rape? Like yeah. this movie. Yeah. Oh my god, I like that movie. Watch it, and then. And then the Wolf of Wall Street. Mm -hmm. How he did it win? How he didn't win for the Wolf of Wall Street? I don't know. Who was he up against that it's, year, though? I guess that would be the thing. That he 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 lost to Matthew McConaughey. In you know, Interstellar. That was by uh, I did hear that no, was good. Though. I didn't I didn't watch it, but I, I I did hear some pretty good things on that one. No, Dallas Buyers looks fine. It, it's it's good about it. Uh, people with uh, cancer. He has a cowboy? Oh. No, AIDS. He has AIDS. AIDS. Oh, sorry. Okay. And yes. medical marijuana. Yeah, my mom the transvestite. Oh, my mom hated that movie. <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't know why. I like this for about good. I think I remember the film. It was fun. It just, it, so he fun. was, in my opinion, McConaughey is fine. He was fine too. Like sexy but, part. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's a He's a fine. He's a bruise. I just thought Jordan, I mean, him playing Jordan Belfort, perfect. Oh, okay, yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. 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 Do you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Do you remember the, uh... Okay, so... God, I know you've seen some of my guys. Uh, first movie. Gosh, I can't believe you have much seconds to even watch it. I don't think this should get better, and it gets fucking way better. Um... Thomas Middlebridge, the main guy, the main character in that show, he was in... Did he have, like, a little 10-minute part 
in uh, in the of Wall Street. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dude, he, he's the guy that's like gets fired because he's cleaning his fish tanks. Yeah, I knew that. He's like at yeah. his desk cleaning his fish tank. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm doing this thing in my gold fish tank. Like, you have you have time to clean your gold fish tank? You have time to work. Blah, blah, blah. He's like, well, no, I get the fuck out. But no, I think out of all the revenue, I do it was great and you know, doing once and I wasn't falling around. I think Tom Hardy was the best part of that. That that's what I've heard is that Tom Hardy by far is yeah. is the thing of that movie. Oh no Oh wow, what a say that. Um Yeah, no, Tom Hardy is I think Tom Hardy is probably the best actor. Oh god, that's a cool Yeah. That's the little Scott. <laughs> um, yeah, he, I don't think Tom Hardy's gonna win though. He, tomorrow, he could pull the upset, I guess. For I supporting, think Sylvester Stallone for is gonna win it again. I would say he probably I mean, does. Unfortunately, gonna unfortunately, if he wins it, he's gonna use it as a 100% tribute to Jordan, which is fine. But because of, especially because of him accidentally, like, omitting him in his first win at the Globes, he's, it's going to be 100% Jordan. I forgot about that. I, oh, hey, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so I was watching a stream of it. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I me mean, either. I was watching a stream of it on, like, YouTube or something like that. Like, yeah. Thinking. Right. And... I was hearing all the back, like, instead of going to commercial, it would just go black, it would just go black. Yeah. And you could hear the people talking in the background, and then you heard the guy coming in, we're on in five, four, I need everyone to applause, three, two, everyone applause, and then all of a sudden you'd hear everybody clapping and stuff yeah. like that. So, and, and you'd see the camera after a went to commercial, and you could hear him talk for like, you know, 30 seconds longer. He went back uh, on and was like, guys, I am so sorry. He's like, I forgot to thank the two most important people, the people that made this film and stuff like that. And we thank Kugler and Michael B. Gordon. Well, that's good. But but no so one no one mentioned back. that. No, no one mentioned it. He did go back. I was like, whoa. That's I, when, I was there, there, like, when I was watching that, I was like, why did he not say Kugler or Michael B. Gordon? Like, got it. Two? Oh, bitch. Oh, oh good good good. Good. Those are the two people that made the fucking movie. Like, I know, I guess it's, it's your friend, though. It's great. Yeah, he, did you see Creed? I have not. I, I've read a lot it's, on it, and I want to see it's it. The best Rocky movie. That's pretty cool. I, I, I like Balboa, honestly. I do too. I love Rocky Balboa. Yeah, that's cool. yeah. Actually, even Last Rambo was pretty good. So did you guys... Know, the, the, the Creed reminds me of a book I read in high school about a black that's kid that's, that's uh, trained by a boxer. He was a lot like Rocky. And I can't remember the name of it, but I had to read it in high school. Mm -hmm. A classic book. I was really the outsiders. Fuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a high ball. I couldn't stop that. Dango stole my baby. <laughs> Dude, maybe the Dango ain't your baby. That's what I got kicked for. <laughs> for That's what? That's exactly what I got. I got kicked off that things happening in Animal Universe. <laughs> I posted Seinfeld quotes all day. Not all day. I posted day. I posted two. I said, these pretzels are making me thirsty. And then I said, maybe the Dango ain't your baby. And obviously they got deleted because they had nothing to fucking do with Hannibal. I'm going to be like, so I heard you guys like Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah. No, and the thing is, is right before I got deleted, I was going to make another post and be like, so today I was at this soup store and I got, I got upset so because I didn't get, and I didn't get bread. So I went back up and he said, no soup for you and took the soup away. <laughs> I would not recommend you all go there. He's definitely a soup Nazi and he's going to post that. And act like it was part of Hannibal and see if anyone got the reference, which obviously everyone did because he doesn't seem a suit Nazi. So, 
<laughs> but just gonna, because today my mom said something on there and was like, uh, it'd be nice if I didn't have to scroll through here and see all the cursing and stuff like that. Just stating her opinion. Yeah. Which I think, I told her, I was like, you're going to state your opinion and there's going to be people that are backlashing you and are just going to talk shit and all you know that, right? Yeah. You know, but I don't really care. It's my opinion and everyone else states their opinion, so I'm going to state mine. So she did, and of course everyone was like, fuck you, everyone, you all the pussies and shit like that. And I was like, right. you call me a pussy and I'm going to call you an illiterate, like, trick <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. So, and then I get deleted for posting Seinfeld quotes. <laughs> But everyone is sitting there bashing my mom, saying, you must have been pushed into a locker when you were a kid, and shit like that. Like, you're, 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 you're raising a pussy, and stuff like that. I'm not joking. Damn. Air continue to be allowed in there. <laughs> but I get, kicked, I get kicked out. For, oh I my god. Out. You see that save. I just hit that out. <laughs> Why'd you save it for him? That was a close ass hit. I didn't mean hit. to. Why would you do it? I didn't mean to. Um, but yeah, and then I get kicked out for fucking Seinfeld quotes. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, yeah, you all fucking do it, uh, Suck my dick. And I, I actually messaged the, the guy that... Like a mod? Fuck! James Griffin or whatever his name is. John Griffin. He kicked Zach. He kicked Zach Rogers because he called him out. Because I guess he was messaging Sky, and Sky was like showing Zach the whole time. He used to have a little bit of on you, you're so cute, stuff like that. Is that what he was screen. saying? Yeah, he was posting screenshots of this conversation, so he ended up picking, he ended up picking Zach. He got mad at him. He picked Zach. He's like, give us a shower. So I was like, and I told this Zach, I was like, there's going to be a day where I'm going to do something stupid. And what was that day? Well, the reason I said it is because I already saw the person on their team is their name is Dingo the Baby. Is it really? Yeah, that's the whole reason he scored on them. Dingo the that, Baby. That's the whole reason I said maybe the Dingo ain't your baby. <laughs> maybe the Dingo ain't your baby. Isn't that the one where she's like high or something? I'm, I'm, I don't actually. Cause, like, where they're, I, think it's the, I think it's the one where they're in Florida and she gets high on back relax, on muscle relaxers because she fucking throws her back out or whatever. I think, I uh, know, I'm pretty sure she's just sitting, like, off the, she's at a party, like, where they're supposed to go see the baby. Oh, you know, uh, the yeah. The baby, you gotta see the baby. <laughs> and she's sitting there, I wonder where the baby is, and she goes, maybe the dingo ate your baby. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, I love me some sun, bro. He, oh, yeah. These pretzels are making me thirsty. You're doing it all wrong. No, no, no. See, that's why you don't have the acting chops. <laughs> it's me, so I sat down with Woody Allen. <laughs> that's who Paul Rush reminded me of. Woody Allen. That's what an incest would be. Do you, do you think so? Do you think Paul Rush reminds you of Woody Allen? Yeah, yeah. actually, yes, they do. The glasses, everything. Yeah. Wow. You didn't even have trouble, Scott. Uh, That's what he said. Didn't he marry his cousin or something? <laughs> it's something Allen. like that, yeah. Woody Allen. I'm pretty sure he married his cousin. He was either a cousin or like, she was really young. Like they met when she was really like, young or something. I know that was daughter. Woody Allen. It was his daughter. Get out of here. No, no, Allen. seriously, look it up, Scott. It was his yeah. daughter. He married his it was like a, It was like a stepdaughter. That's what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. His young, his yeah, young he's stepdaughter. Like Chinese. It's, he's like Chinese. Yeah. Asian. No and, she was, and she was really young. Like, yeah, way younger. Young yeah. women, probably. That's why, like, ever since then, I'm just kind of like, eh. That's like fucking, uh, you know, Jerry Lee Lewis. Yeah. Fucking. Yeah. I love Ray Balls of Fire, man, but shit. <laughs> yeah. That um, stuff happened all the time back in the day. It just wasn't celebrities doing Right. Like <laughs> Still happens today. <laughs> yeah, not as much. Not as much as there's in. Definitely yeah. not in the United States. I mean, not as much. You see it. Definitely see it. Oh time. my god! Yeah. Wow! Wow, 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 wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, wow, wow. wow. Oh, I read, I read a thing, uh, there's a time about 
uh, it was reporting on how Sasha Baron, Co Baron Cohen was uh, on a list with the FBI when he was filming uh, for at Amber. You know? Yeah. <laughs> he was on the federal FBI list. I believe he, he did an interview <laughs> where he's uh, just causing trouble with the media and that makes him pay attention. <laughs> well, he did an interview where, um, like, because he never broke character yeah. during Borat, and there was yeah, actually a time sense. where, like, the police were on the way to arrest him because he was like running naked outside these people's house. He was climbing out their window naked or something for some unknown reason. It was a hotel he was in, yeah, where he ran through the hotel naked. Yeah, they, uh, his his uh, production manager, the guy yeah. who played the other guy, yeah, the that guy, yeah, asked him, yeah. yeah. Um, he told him that the he got they got tipped off by another person uh, that worked at the desk. Yeah. And told him that the FBI was there and he told Sasha to jump out the window and he did and he broke his ankle. Yeah. And the, basically his his uh, options were stay in character, get arrested, get deported, not go to finish the movie, or break character. And eventually he just stayed in character yeah. but ran away and like uh, got away. And they were they were threatening to charge him with uh, uh, trying to. Uh, Break. Um, basically, yeah, it's basically, what it was was for like trying to break like friendly ties with Kazakhstan because Kazakhstan stand had heard about her. You know, yeah. Like there was actual marketing that had hit the. Dude, I, yeah. I, I, didn't, I don't care much for Ali G in the house. The fucking the Ali G show. Yeah. So funny. Yeah. I still. He's doing another was, movie. He's doing another. I still wish he did Queen. She was yeah. Mickey. Why did that not ever happen? I didn't want him to did do you it. hear about that? Uh -huh. I heard no. He got in an altercation, well, just a verbal altercation with Brian May, one of the cars to play, because oh. Brian wanted it to be about the band. And it, he oh. wanted it all to be about the music, and he did not want it to be about Freddie and, you know, his. You know, the story behind that. Because that's a, that's a polarizing story. He found out he had a pill, or at least broke it to the media, and then 24 hours later died. Yeah. That's a, that's a story, and, and pretty much really enough, the guy enough to have him in a movie or biography about him. Yeah. But that's why. Because he wanted it, if, if Sasha was like, if I'm doing this, it's going to be about Freddie. It's not going to be about Queen. It's going to be about Freddie Mercury. Because as, mu as much as people as much as people like the music of Queen, it's Freddie Mercury it's that Freddie they care about. You know, yeah, I, I hate to say it, it, hate to be a well, dick. The movie that was pitched was a Freddie Mercury biopic, not right. a Queen. Not a but Queen. Brian May was trying. He was changing it. Right. He had well, he control of the movie. rights to the Queen name, probably. Yes. Not to be a dick. What? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. Oh, oh, but like, you know, like, like the Doors, you know, it's like they do the Doors biopic yeah. stuff, but it's like, we tune in for Jim Morrison. Yeah. The Doors movie. But movie. honestly, that's how it should be. They're the most polarizing characters, or, like, not characters, but people in the band. Yeah. I mean, people don't, you don't listen to Queen for Brian May, you listen to the fucking vocals. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, you know, they're, there's a reason, you know, it's like an Eddie Van Halen, you know, Van Halen. There's a reason people knew who Van Halen was, and he was the guitarist, you know, he was not even a singer, but they didn't, you know, nobody tuned in for Roth, you know, that's why they replaced him with Hagar, and fucking who cares. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, I did. <laughs> I, I'm sure. I, <laughs> well, no, I like it better with Hagar. I like that. Yeah, yeah, that's the, actually, yeah, that's the, I... I'm the same. What? I can't believe I missed that. I prefer, yeah, I prefer it too for the most part, and especially, especially the later stuff that they did. Me too. Uh, like the very last David stuff Lee they Rock? did with David Lee Roth was, oh my god, god, it was so bad. Yeah, when when the first, you know, 5150 came out, I was like, oh, okay, I can do it. Well, obviously, I didn't lie, but I, I first heard the CD. Right. I was listening to the whole discography of the whole thing. I think that. I was listening to that. And no, maybe it's 88 and 2 games. I can't remember. Shit. Oh, that's him. That's him. I think we want to go for These are the best two tapes out of all Van Halen for me. I watched the old tape Robbie had of Van Halen when Eddie was. Not 
in the band for a little while, and mm -hmm. his brother Alex Van Halen plays guitar. And yes, I yeah, that. I know. I watched wow. the whole like. <laughs> what? That was my shot. Right Get the fuck out of here. Watch this replay. That's me. We both did, I guess. I Bam. <laughs> Robbie was like, you should watch this. It's like really kind of rare. You know, because you get to see his brother actually playing in his band. In his brother's band. Yeah. Well, he is. He's a drummer. Yeah, but he was playing guitar on this too. And, and Eddie Van Halen is not in the band for that too. Got it. Like, apparently they had trouble with the band. And they had two yeah, and yeah, he yeah. came back. Right yes. That. Yep. And apparently his brother filled in for him on guitar when he was like sick or hurt and stuff too. Before. He's a good guitarist. Not Alex Van Halen's great guitarist. Yeah. Not as good as Eddie, but uh, he's fine. Oh, that's an open shot. Did you get that? That's got it. it. I got it. Uh, I seen that. I was like, wow. Yeah. That's same. Luckily, I didn't see them with Hagar, and uh, it, it, it's Eddie Van Halen is the craziest thing I've ever heard on the car. That's just insane. I don't know how someone... I mean, oh my god, <laughs> they, 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 they have given up. <laughs> <laughs> we have seen personal bosses, you know what I mean? I've yeah. seen great guitars, but Christ, Eddie Van Halen, it's a classical rock, so good. Oh, Seeing eruption live. Oh, you know what? There's another good band to watch that you wouldn't think is. It's fucking Jesus Priest, dude. They're one really? of the yeah. rock bands that I've seen through there. Yeah, and I got to see them in an Oz, bro. They're real, like, they're rockers. Like, they get real into what they're doing. <laughs> they rock yeah. out. Hey, for their hate they get, no shit, go watch fucking Nickelback. I swear to God. Dude? Yeah, I seen them live, and they cuss up a game for them. They, <laughs> they fucking, they, they blow the roof off the place. They really do. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 they're famous. Massive. Yeah. They have a huge fan. They, they get such Great. hate. They get such hate, and I mean, yeah, they have it's, quite a, you know, they have a generic sound for a lot of their stuff. But they've, they've got yeah. those, you know, handful of songs that everybody likes. You know, there, there's at least one Nickelback song that pretty much everybody likes, you know. It may not be the same song. It may not be the same song for everybody, but there's, there's, there's always one. And, uh, it's it's because people it's not the fact that people don't like them it's just the fact that they're easy to pick on them people and they get yeah. Yeah. way overplayed yeah, yeah. yeah. Way overplayed. it's just like creed it's people, people they're easy to pick on because they're just but you know what I, I can't and turn on the grids and even take the fucking music seriously it's the yeah. same shit they were playing 15 years ago yes. oh not even that it, it's it's the same bands playing the same shit yeah Playing, playing yeah. new, old yeah. songs. Like, like today they're like, oh yeah, this is a new three going down with new members, blah blah blah. And I'm like, oh wow, they're still it's playing. It's fucking insane. Like, are they even relevant? Like, play some other rock music. Yeah. Relevant. Play yeah, some like, like don't, like, you don't <laughs> even have to just play Metallica. radio rock. Like, you could play some British rock or... Yeah, it's like, like you're, you're fucking, rock. you're fucking radio, you know? It's like, guess yeah. what? You're dying. Time to, time to innovate. Yeah. <laughs> Playing the same shit is not how you stay relevant. No, but the thing is, is they're always gonna have those people that listen to the top, you know, the yeah. 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 yeah, your your top, your top twenty. Yeah, it's the same fucking twenty, forty songs on the table. But if they day. put other stuff on there, those so people would listen to that too. That's the thing. Yeah, it would grow. Yeah, people would love to hear that. I, I can't remember what it, what it was. There was a movie where someone's like, you know, no one wants those songs. It's like, no one wants those songs because they don't know they're there. You don't fucking play them. <laughs> oh, uh, Airheads. Airheads. Fucking Airheads. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, they're so good. Why haven't I heard them? It's like, because no, I don't feel a request. It's like, because you don't play them. Um, yeah, oh my gosh. Like, there was... Ah, oh, I fucking just put that in. No, I didn't. I don't think I did. Dude, that's a great movie. I Is that, that the one where they're in the band, The Lone Rangers? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Ah, shit, they got one. But, uh, no, um, in, uh, what was it? oh, yeah, so I'm listening to the radio the other day, KZK, skimming through, because uh, I, cause I have an old-ass car, all I got the tape deck and radio, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, this, they're like, here's a new song by, uh, 3A, I think it was the 3A's Grace song. 
Uh, sure. And it's like, it's called, the song is called Fallen Angel. So immediately I'm like, alright, this is gonna be dumb. Uh, this is gonna yeah. be, this yeah, is gonna exactly. be, this like, is gonna be... Okay, this is a rock and roll trope. Yeah, this, this is gonna be some yeah. classic grade A butt rock. Uh, it's gonna sound like Breaking Bad in the song. Yeah, so. and uh, so it starts up, no. it starts up, and I noticed, like, like, a big problem I have with pop music in general is that, it, is that it's all chorus, you know? It's just, it's all, it's, the songs are 90% chorus, and I hate that yeah. shit. Uh, like, I listened to Katy Perry song, and I'm like, God, like, it's already at the chorus again? It's like, it does the chorus, she says, like, 12 words top, and then it's back to the chorus. And it's like, Jesus Christ. So, she and in this song... She probably better than the rock dance. Yeah, she does. Because <laughs> in this one, uh, if you didn't know the name of the song was Fallen Angel, you would fucking know by the end of this song, halfway through this fucking song. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, the chorus is, uh, it's like, Fallen Angel... Fall so hard, never hate you, so so hard. A fallen angel, a fall tonight. A fallen angel, rock a bride. A fallen no, angel. And I'm just like, Jesus. And so I'm like, this this is mind numbing. Like a few days later, it comes on again, and I mentally go, I'm gonna count. I'm gonna fucking count how many times they say the phrase fallen angel in this song. And I shit you not. <laughs> It's like 21 times, and it's like, this song is only three minutes long. You're saying this song, you're saying the words Fallen Angel, the equivalent of every 10 seconds. It's like, mm -hmm. that is dumb. I don't know who your producer is, who wrote this music, who composed it and orchestrated it. Fire them. <laughs> you fucking kill yourself, please. I can't believe you said that about Breaking Benjamin. Dude, I like Breaking Benjamin, but they all they, they 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 sound the same too. Yeah, I like no, Breaking I Benjamin, but they they're pretty repetitive. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. When a lot of those bands came out, what they were doing was new. It wasn't interesting. Yeah. yeah, but now it's been yeah. now that they 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 beat it to death. Yeah, they've yeah. beat it to death, and the bands that they've let beat it to death. Yeah, also. <laughs> like like friggin' uh, Breaking Benjamin, Polyamorous, their first album. Love that album. Yes, yeah. well, so I do good. too. Yeah, I have it. I own that album. It's one of the few CDs I still own. Really? Yeah. So good. Man. That's what you're gonna see. Yeah, uh, I love I love the Offspring. They're repetitive, but man, I love Offspring. Like I just. God. I don't the, thing, the thing with the offspring is not a lot of, you don't hear a lot of, uh, I guess, punk, rock, pop. Yeah. I don't really know how to explain their yeah. music. You don't really hear that anymore. You don't hear, like, ska or anything. Anymore. Yeah. No, the band, there's a few of those bands that are still around, like Less Than Jake and the Offspring. Real Big Fish and the Mighty yeah. Mighty Boss bands. Of course, you still have those, some of them, but they're not, Some of them like, still put out music. But. They still put out music, but, but they are less relevant. They still have a fan base. But, but you also have a problem is, is just like, you know, like YouTube, base, with like YouTube like and stuff is, you know, getting out there is easier. Getting big is not. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's so... Big, People, people as artists are realizing that getting big is not as easy as it was once was because you don't have to be the only band out there. Ooh, I just can't. You, know, you, can, you can be a band that only serves a small audience and do what you love and still make a living. I can make a million dollars. Yeah. Did you, did you, did you tell, uh, whenever, Scott, you'll know this guy, but the guy art is murder. Yeah. The lead singer left. Oh, How much money he was making every year? Yeah, Lutzen is that. How much money is he making? Dude, he was making 16. Oh, well, that's... Oh, that's nothing, yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? That's what sucks, is you have bands like that, which I guess... But he made... But he was probably happy to make a living and do what he wanted to do. He wasn't making a living. That's a thing. He's got a family. Depending on where you live. I I did hear, actually, now that you're talking about he left because he wasn't making enough money. Yeah, but it was bad. Like, I mean, he I mean, he blamed he blamed the record deals, everything. Yeah, well, and, because the record deals were coming. Everyone, everyone was different. everyone was saying that this guy is like he's trying to speak it out. Fuck. Uh, yeah. Record companies are, are trying to make all the money. Not doing the things, so what, not you know, it's they the re record sales are whole is down, so they're trying to you know, it's not about making profit. It's about making more profit than the year you made before. And if sales are down, they're going to cut it from somewhere, and unfortunately that's where they're cutting it from. Yep. And the bad thing about that is people, people don't buy CDs anymore. Like 
Right. That's true, but you know what? There's always a way to monetize your work. Yeah. yeah. You have to, you have to keep up on it. And you, you got to go with the time. You know, people, you, you don't want to adapt. You know, there's, there's just so many things. Like the record industry as a whole, they, they refuse to adapt, and then they lose money. You know, when Napster hit, they could have started monetizing right away. Instead, they fought it. They fought it and fought it and fought yeah, it. And piracy. That's what allowed piracy to happen. Yeah. Because they bought it and they didn't have their own systems that were the same as the ones people were using. Yeah. Oh, fuck, that's wide open. Do you know now that I can pretty much get any song off Spotify, listen to it in or I can download it, I can so I never buy it. Yeah. Yeah, I never do it. Because yeah, I know I, I can literally get that song anywhere. Yeah. yeah. And I you just put it on the month and have any CD I've ever wanted. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why would I need to buy it? I don't need to buy it anymore. Yeah. Or, you know, for me, I want to be listening to the new Kanye West album. I don't need to buy title. I'll use the fucking free month, and then can't do it. And then, because you're going to be a prick, then I'll download it from the Pirate Bay. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, even that, you can, you can go, you can go listen did, to did it you hear on that YouTube. you took one of the songs down? Yeah. He took the whole album he down. He took... Oh, he bounced over me! He took the album down, but he took it down because he was changing one track called Wolf. Yeah, he was... No... No, what it is, is, uh... Look at that, it bounced right the fuck over me. Because, um, uh, I, I listened to both versions of it, and it definitely was different than the one that they released on the radio, the mm -hmm. XM. The one, the one on the CD, on Tidal, is yeah. just him. It's just a track with him. And then the other version has Vic Mensa, Sia, please fuck out some more Oh, I didn't hear that. I heard a version of who did it, who did it, had it, it had another version to it. Well, the first day he released it, there was some mastering problems with the, with the track. So he took, he took the whole CD off, put it back on with the, with the track fixed. And then... And then the other version of the song got released on Reddit. Like it was yeah. But, I mean, people were the upset song is still they on were. there. It's just not the one that everyone wants to hear. It's just the version of the like, If everyone wants to hear this, you know, Sia. Like, Sia is a fucking artist of our time. We want to hear Sia and we want a Kanye West song. Like, fuck yeah. Oh, I just heard people were mad because the way that you buy it on title is not done very well and it doesn't code very well. And they said it like gives you a link after you buy it. Buy it? And, don't uh, buy it. Well, when, there, when there is can, no way to purchase it. No, no, you could purchase it on title the day it came out. That's what I'm saying. You, you, there was two ways to purchase it. And, um, and we talked about it at least. They said not only could you stream it, but they like, you could purchase it through title and they said that whoever designed the page obviously like, they had never intended for this this platform to so, like, be able to purchase CDs because the way they did it was really spammy and all these options that were hidden. And that uh, it, it emailed you a link to access it, it's still in title servers. And uh, they said there was a deluxe version, it was like a higher format, you could pay more for it, for 20 bucks, and you get a $15 version that was like, your standard for good quality. And yeah, 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 you get the lossless audio. And Fuck. that, uh, God, it's yeah. the only CD that's ever been for sale. Um, but, uh, yeah. basically once he took the music down, and they had already emailed those links out to all those people, he said there's no way for those people to recover to prove that they bought it because it, it wasn't set up. But it wasn't set up for so people could, people people didn't download it before it got pulled, they might just do it. Yeah, that's that's and why they, I mean the dude the dude's a prick, you know what I mean? I, as much as I love Kanye West's music, the dude is a fucking asshole. And especially with this. Like I, I will buy your CDs, man. I will go out and purchase your music. I yeah. think your music well, is genius. I think it, it feels like, like, like you know, like it, it, it feels like he's kind of saying, well, if you don't want to use the title, then you can't get it. Yeah, no, that's exactly what he's saying. Use title or you're not getting my fucking album, you know what I mean? 
And you know, there's other artists that I like that are on title, like Daft Punk, but I don't think I would ever go there to listen to them. And no, it's, it's just that there's there's already services that exist to serve this purpose, you know? It's like, yeah. it's the same as like, it's, it's the same as like Origin and Steam. It's like, I don't, I don't need all these gaming services, you know? It's, I don't need it. Now, I do, I do agree that it is okay for a service like Tidal to exist if people yeah. want it, and, and it offers better quality, which it, I hear it really does. Or it does, too. it does. That's what they, that's what they offer. But, uh, it's premium service that you pay for, and not everybody's going to want it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not even, even if it's better, the thing is, is people like what they have. You know, it's, it's the reason things like Twitter and stuff haven't caught on, like, they, you know, Twitter's good for celebrities. Because Facebook is such a staple that even if something comes along that offers a better thing, it's like, oh, I don't want to have to re-upload all my shit and all yeah, my friends. Yeah, what is the cost of leaving and who the service? Yeah, what, you know, I'd rather keep a, a slightly less good service for the convenience of not having to do that. You know, it's like it's like buying a new cell phone. It's like, fuck, now I gotta fucking get all my contacts back and shit. Jeez. That's right. You're completely right. I've never actually and thought of it. And a lot of companies, I mean, all companies know that. And yeah. All companies have to deal with that. But they, they, but they just, you know, they can't admit to themselves that someone might not want to do that. You know, that you know, they're they're required to their stockholders. You know, when they say, "What are you doing to make the company better?" They gotta have something to say. And unfortunately, that's what they're saying. But uh, I mean, I'm I'm oh, like I said, I'm okay with them having that service and yeah. doing it that way. I'm just not gonna buy it. But I I think it's okay to do it, if, especially if they're doing it because they think if they think the artist deserves more money. Than they do. I do. I think there's a lot of artists who are underpaid for their work. Sure. Yeah. It's called yeah. starving artists for a reason. Well, yeah. artists right, uh, for streaming services. They don't get paid shit for you streaming. That's them. that's what I hear. That's what I, is that what you mean? Like, because Taylor yeah. Swift makes a fuck, fuck, ton of money, but she doesn't make shit for you listening to her album on Spotify. Because she doesn't allow you to. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why. Because they, because because they won't pay. She well, the best money. That's cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah but th th that's an exclusivity thing. She's popular, and she has the she has the ability she to has make people. those demands. Yeah, she has yeah. people who figure out well. Every time somebody lists every for like every fifteen thousand times the song is listened to, they say that's one person who didn't buy an album, and that's basically what it turns out to. They say, and they yeah. find out how many t million times the song is listened to in a month, and they say just how many people are not buying the album, and just how much you should be getting paid for album, and it doesn't match up, and then so you know, and that's how yeah. it works. Really yeah. But you know, you release something on YouTube, fucking stick ads on it, and bing bing boom. Because I, I think that is the actual number that you use. For every 15,000 listens a song has all the way through, that's one person who cannot buy an album. And they said at the end of the year, it's like millions of albums. Yeah. Which is so like millions and millions of albums. But also, that's a weird number because what about the person listening to the song over and over and over again? You know? I know. Right? It's like that's a, that's, a, that's a wonky statistic. Yeah, it is. Oh, they have yeah. And they make them up as they go. Yeah. It's like Godwin style was most UV of all time with, you know, a fucking billion views, but it was also right. known that a shitload of people were just reordering the page over and over again. Yeah. Ah shit. Yeah. Oh, no. oh, oh that shade. Starting to match with some good people. <laughs> yeah, really. Making me work. Trying to trying to talk and work. <laughs> nice, <God>. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if this game is coming off of PS4, but there's this game called uh, Dangerous Golf. Yeah. That's being made by a, uh, a group of developers that used to used to be in Criterion. What they call them. Yeah. But, uh, they I thought it was still Criterion. They're not anymore, but they made they made the burnout. Um, or maybe the but maybe Criterion still exists, but they're not in Criterion anymore. But uh, they were, and they they did the burnout game. 
Yeah. Uh, I was like revenge. So, oh yeah. So they're they're implementing that aftertouch control into a uh like a golf game. So like a much closed golf game and so yeah. and stuff. And it's like um like not regular golf, but it's like, you know, it's like uh uh what do you call it? Mini golf and stuff. Ah. So it looks ah. like it looks like a ton of fun. Yeah, it's really sick. I can't wait for mm -hmm. Paragon. Dude, I've been in the oh, middle cool. getting the fucking data. Yeah, that game looks badass. Yeah, I, I went on the website the other night. And yeah, did you it. finally sign up for that? Yeah, I signed up for it. Yeah, the early access alpha is gone. It's, it's up like every Saturday. I've got it. Oh, oh yeah. That's like the third person yeah. MOBA shooter, right? Oh, yeah. Scott! Is it third person? Yeah, it's third person. It's like Smite, except it's a little more ridiculous. So Smite is third person, too. Yeah. Smite, yeah. Third person. Uh, I can't wait. I still oh. can't wait for Battleborn. I know what you, I know Scott. I know what you have to say about that. Oh, I just, I just heard, I just heard a lot of reviews and stuff from the like, it's like my own thing. It looks uh, like it's the I, I heard game. somebody talking about it today, actually, on a podcast. They said, I'll buy the game if it comes with cheap mode and it's good. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, like, there's a ton of things, like, apparently, like, finishing some missions is almost impossible if you don't use the right class and it's going to cost it. Holy shit. Yeah. Much. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, I... I Wish and wish and wish I could have gotten to that beta, but I'm not a streamer and I'm not a pro gamer, so. I'm not a pro gamer? Turns out I'm not. Ah, damn it. Uh, I don't know if we got time. Ah, uh, oh, fuck. I was, I was really excited when I announced that it was going to be a new one for us At first it was, you know, it's Blizzard, right? It's going to be a new one for us to do it. And there's going to be a new one for us to do it. I'm still waiting for. Which I guess I shouldn't say that because Diablo is really still PS4. But not at the same time. Run, but yeah. Maybe. What's that? I don't know. What is it? I, what is I was it? wondering if it runs on Unity because all the games that are on PC that run on Unity that come over to PS4 end up running really bad. Hmm. Play one more and then I'll be in. I'm yeah. Gonna, good. I'm gonna step away for a second. I'm gonna play one more and then I got some League of Legends to watch with Tyler. Um, What's his okay, last name? Talking? Wait, don't say that. Tyler That's Power? Never mind. <laughs> it's alright. Oh, well, too good. Um, <laughs> look him up. Look him up on Facebook. No, I have him, so but. I, no, I have him. I just. Uh, no, no, I've got all the people. If, if people are oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um. Bye, Scott. Bye, Scott. Um, we were talking, I still had, this has been on my mind. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Ever since, ever since we were talking, ever since we were talking about Kaiju, there is a movie that's by the guy, that's by, oh, yes. it's by the guy that directed Snow Beacher. Fucking two, to, two on three score, hot, hot god dang. Yeah, I've seen Snow Pierce. You did? Okay. Did you like it? Yeah, I liked it. Okay. Uh, so the guy, the director of that, also directed a movie called Host. Yes, yep, I've seen it. Okay. Did you like it? It was pretty good. I, uh, yeah. I only saw no, part, no. I, I saw, like, most of it. Uh, Brett, yeah. who is a massive, massive kaiju fan, uh, yeah. showed it to me and told me about it. What is it? One of my favorite kaiju. The Host. The Host. The one that's on the the one that's on the movie. Yeah. The one that was on uh it's on for a while. It's it is still. still. Every time I see every see every time I uh, talk to Crystal about the book, the host, she keeps trying to tell me about it, I think of that movie. I'm like, Oh, is it this movie? She's like, No. <laughs> She's talking about the Stephanie Myers, the girl that wrote Twilight. Yeah. 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 
that some of that hurts. So like, oh, yeah. that Which, that's got well. Sir Sharon in it. Uh, I but, uh... I think I watched that movie. I just can't remember. Yeah, I'm almost positive on that. That's good. I like him too. I like most of them. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this constitutes a kaiju, but the movie Monsters, the first one. Oh uh, man, that's yeah. definitely kaiju. Is it? Because it doesn't really oh, feel yeah. like that. It's not really like it's kaiju. It's monsters. They're just in it. I mean, so there's a lot of kaiju movies that don't really have to be. It's, I guess it, I guess you're right about that, but it does have been in the, it. Ka kaiju, in it. The, kaiju has to be. They're just like a part of the environment. Big monster. Yeah, yeah, it's a big tentacle monster. I mean, it's like a spider monster. It's like a big walking yeah. monster. It's a monster that basically came off of extraterrestrial. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it came oh, off like yeah. extraterrestrial like debris or something, and they started colonizing on Earth and in Mexico. <laughs> I remember when I first yeah. started that group films. I was like, mm -hmm. I kept trying to decide what I was going to make my cover, my cover photo, and I was like. I think I'm just gonna make it Scoot McMary. That was the first movie oh, okay. I'd ever. Oh shit! Oh, yeah, oh. He's a great actor, man. The first Scoot movie I saw awesome. him in was uh, In Search of a Midnight Kiss, and I still love that movie. First thing I ever seen him in was he was Monsters, and then obviously he just started showing up in random shit out of the box. Yeah, he was in Killing Them Softly. And that was Killing Them Softly. He was in Argo. He, like he, he was, was in Girl. Just a bunch he of was, random shit. Yeah, he was in that movie where. Uh, uh, Jim from the office is a little bit trying to promise land. Tracking. Promise land. Promise yeah. land with Matt Damon. Yeah. yeah. He's like a movie with all. So he's in he's in Batman v Superman. So I don't know uh, like who did this movie, but it's in the movie. But I'm sure if you remember that kiss about a guy going on a blind date on. Um, Basically, for me, you know, I'm trying to change the and it's black and white movie. You know, not very well shot or anything, but it's a good movie. Yeah. But it's got, um, they've got, uh, Scorpion's oh. Scorpion 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 yeah, it's good. Mm. Um, I, mean, I think it's his, I think it's his, his like second movie. Okay. His first one with like some. Oh. Yeah, my boy, Scoot McMurray. He did those several commercials. Shit. Oh, that's him. Get it. Oh, what a save, Scott. Um, I never, did you ever watch the second one, Scott? Dark Comedy? No. I mean, I figured it's a different movie, right? Yeah. I suppose it fucking sucks. Yeah, I mean, it's the first movie. Yeah, but it's like, it's like a bunch of people accidentally watched the first movie and didn't like it, and they tried to make the second one pissed or anything. Yeah. Like, let's make a movie completely different from the first one that takes place in the same movie. Mm -hmm. And it's not the same type of movie, it doesn't feel the same people. It just. It looks like that's Call a, of Duty. That's a experience. <laughs> oh no! Ooh. That's a crazy story, too, man. What Gareth, what Gareth Edwards? Oh, oh my gosh. Which one? What? What, what is Gary Monsters? Oh, the second one or the first one? Scott! Who, who does the second one? <laughs> Scott is mad! I know, it I know. This is such oh, a tight game. Am I looking at the wrong? Oh, I fucking. <laughs> <laughs> god damn it. Watch him. Oh, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there trying to push him out of the way. Like, I think he's. <laughs> um, Gareth Edwards did the first one. And then he went, so he did, he did Monsters, you know, on his laptop. That whole movie was created on his damn laptop. And that's like it. 
and then he created, and then he did the remake of Godzilla, which will say whatever you want. It's I like it. Fine movie. I like it. Oh, he did the remake with uh, Brian Cranston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I like it. I like and that. then now he goes from that to he's getting to do a Star Wars movie. He's doing the next Star Wars movie. Uh, he's, he's, doing doing Rogue, he's doing Rogue One. Rogue One. Rogue One. Oh, yeah. cool. Like so, awesome. he did two movies, man. He did awesome. monsters on his laptop. Got the fucking Godzilla sequel, and now is doing a Star Wars movie. That's like a dream come true. I'm backing out, by the way. Yeah, I did too. Like that's crazy. And then Ryan awesome. Johnson, that guy's done what, like Brick and I think Looper. Even oh, Looper. Yeah, Brick, Looper, and his now. I just doing recently Star found Wars. out he did both of those. Yeah. So I, I like, like both of them. I like, I like Looper. Brick more. I, yeah. Me too. Me too. I would definitely like Brick more. But Looper, Looper was cool. good, but it could have been fleshed out better. It seemed like there was some missing story there. Yeah. And then, uh, who else? I don't know who's... Oh, The Ninth Wind. It was directed by Colin Trevero, the guy that did Not Safety Guaranteed. And then this guy's got a funny story too. He does Not Safety Guaranteed and then gets Jurassic World. He does one oh, fucking yeah. movie, gets Jurassic World, and then a Star Wars movie. All these directors coming out of fucking nowhere. Mm -hmm. Crystal went and saw um, a movie with Megan in it. She went and saw it's got it's got um, Rebel Wilson, I think. It's uh, we, how, to be, how to be single. How to be single. How to be single. Life. How to be single. Yeah. yeah. I gotta say, I Rebel Wilson and Dakota. I, I'm not a fan of Rebel Wilson. Are you really? I just I, I feel like she's so that. overrated. I mm -hmm. think. I think Amy Schumer is very overrated. Yes, I'll but I second think she's that. Funny, I I think she is funny, especially her stand-up and her show. Inside Amy Schumer, oh my gosh. You know, um, I don't know. With, with Rebel Wilson, I feel like it's just she's just like the new Jenny McCarthy, who I was not a massive McCarthy, fan right? of either. What's that? Jen, not Jenny. Melissa, Melissa, Melissa McCarthy. McCarthy. Yeah, fuck. Her cousin. Her cousin. Yeah. Um, so I feel like she's kind of rehashing that, and I feel like, you know, I mean, call me, you know, I'm sure I'll get labeled fucking sexist or whatever. I, I don't find a lot of female comedians funny. I feel like they go to the same, same, uh, portfolio of jokes of I'm a woman and it's not, it's it's uncouth for me to say vagina and I love dick, and it's like her <laughs> funny. It's like <laughs> not really, you know, fucking yeah, no. Say something witty, no, no, is, and and then usually the comeback to the, usually come back to that is well guys can just be like oh dicks and cocks you know pussy that's funny it's like no nah, that's not funny either <laughs> it's, funny. <laughs> it's like there's some people that make right? it funny sure and it was funny when it for like when Hangover first came out yeah it was the first like really raunchy fucking movie so of course it was funny as hell but after that it's just been rehashed and rehashed and rehashed where it's not funny anymore. And not even that. I mean, it's, it's 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 dude. Where's my car? You know, in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Except, dude, where's my friend? Yeah. It, uh, it's dude, where's my friend? Yeah. Exa where's your friend, dude? <laughs> dude, where's my friend? <laughs> where's your friend, dude? <laughs> but having having said that, for two girls to go see that movie, that's probably really hilarious. No. Right. Yeah. No, I'm sure. And I did want to see Sisters, like the Tina Fey. And I've heard that one's pretty good. I have heard that's pretty good. I yeah. want to see the one that has uh, Aubrey Plaza and... Oh, Dirty Grandpa? Um, no. Okay, please say no. That no. No. <laughs> they're, they, they're, they're, it's like a Craig, it's like where they put an ad on Craigslist and they find these guys do, and the two girls answer it, and it's like two guys asking for dates to like a, a trip to like... Rio de Janeiro or some shit. Oh, I've never mm -hmm. even heard of it. And they answer it and they're like, we'll go with you. And they're like really trashy, slutty girls and they're pretending to be, trying to pretend to be nice and stuff. And they're getting real drunk and fucking um, leaving the, the guys passed out and shit. It looks like it's funny. Oh. I can't remember who else is in it, but it's got Abu Plaza and it's got um, Adam from um, Workaholics. Adam Devine? Yeah, it's got him in it. Um, I don't know if he's the main character or not, but he's in it. Hmm. Now, I don't really 
talking about? Let me see if I can find the name of this. Rebel, Rebel Wilson. Oh, we're talking about Melissa McCarthy and Rebel Wilson. Yeah. The only, it's the same trope they use over and over. And I, I think Melissa McCarthy is genuinely a funny actress and a good actress. I really do. I think she's stereotypically cast. Yeah. Yes. She's definitely, she's definitely stereo, like cast into I'm the big chick. And it's not, and people find it funny. I don't. When she right. falls over. Right. When she what? falls over 15 it's, times in a fucking movie, it's not funny. It's it's the same shtick that it, it, it's the same shtick that that even you know fucking Kevin uh, Kevin James Kevin James you know is on the fat uh, on the fat guy wow yeah oh it's called Mike and Dave Need Wedding Day uh. oh yeah I know what you're talking about I almost watched that trailer last night <laughs> watch the trailer okay check it out but yeah no it's it's, it's got Anna Kendrick Zac Efron and the being a big plus. That's it. Yep. Steven Root. But that's it's not that's not I'm definitely not sexist because I feel the same way about Kevin James. I feel yeah. the same way about all that that type of actor. Yeah. That that quote unquote physical comedy. It's like Yeah. There's a way to do mm-hmm. there's a way to do physical comedy and it's it's mm-hmm. not the way you're doing it. Because yeah. you're trying to present Three Stooges did it for years. Yeah. Well the thing is too, it's it's Three Stooges is physical comedy work because it's put into a world you're framing is a mm-hmm. silly, off kilter world. They're trying to make these movies that are real, grounded movies in reality, and then silly stuff happens that's unbelievable and out there. Like yeah. like Kevin James gets mule kicked in one of his fucking movies and bounces off a car and he's like, Ugh! You know, it's like, no, you just presented me a movie that's attempting to be real and showed me something that would kill a man. You know, it's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You gotta, you know, oh, pick pick your movie. fucking setting. What do you want? Yes. Now, did you... I, I Did you see the movie Spy? Yes. No. Did, did you? Wait, I, no, Spy? I no, no, I'm thinking of... Spy. I'm thinking of... I'm thinking of fucking something else. Not Spy. Okay, no, so I did not see Spy. Melissa McCarthy and Jason Statham. Right. Did you laugh your balls off? Stone. Oh my god. No, seriously. It's the, it's like the funniest movie she's ever done. She falls over one time and I laugh my ass off. It's just the yeah. context it was in, the, the, the situation she was in. Yeah. Whenever she slides across, like, I like the heat, but when she slides across the hood and falls over, like, I was like, okay, I could see that coming from a mile away. Right. Telegraphed, but you know, the, to hell. Yeah, but in this, like, the movie, I was already laughing so hard. You guys gotta watch it. It's really good. I rec- I definitely recommend it. I do not recommend Melissa McCarthy movies. Yeah. Like, maybe St. Vincent. Like, St. Vincent was good, but that's not normally Sevens. what she would do. What? Sevens. The movie Sevens? Yeah, the Sevens. She's in, she's in it. She's in one part with Ryan Reynolds. It's like multiple stories. Multiple really? Hmm. It's really weird. Are you talking about it's the Nines? Weird. Or something. Is it called the Nines? I want to say it's called, called the Nines. <laughs> I was like, I think we might be two numbers off. <laughs> I'm looking it up right Maybe. now. Well, I, I thought it was, for some reason I thought it was called the Seven, but I'm, I, I'm not a baby, you know. There might be two movies, you know. Did you see it? I, that sounds like Nines, but I haven't watched that okay, in a while. while. Nines. Yeah, no, that's the Nine. Ryan McReynolds, Hope Davis, and uh, okay. Melissa McCarthy. It was directed by John August, which if you don't know... I wouldn't recommend it, but it would be. No, it's, I like it. I like it a lot. I, um, he, is, he is either directing or writing. He's doing something. He's, a, he's only done the Nines, but I guess he is doing the... Uh, uh, scary, to- scary stories to tell in the dark. Oh, cool. I just saw that. Yeah, yep. I thought Del Toro was doing that. He I, it looks like I'm looking it up on IMDb. It looks like he is just doing the screenplay. Uh-huh. He's writing it, which John August is a great writer. So he did Big Fish and Tight Navy and stuff like that. I okay. like Big Fish. Okay. It's it's yeah. a little bad. Oh, he did I like Dark that. Shadows. He, he did, did some Tim Burton movie. Oh, Tim. Oh man. 
I'm not a big Tim Burton fan, and I fucking thought Dark Shadows was garb. He did Big Fish, and he did Big Fish. I know. Tim Burton. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't say I didn't like none of his work. I just said I'm not a big fan. Yeah. I like I like Edward Scissorhands. You know? No, oh, Edward Scissorhands. Yeah. Uh, big Fish. But he yeah. does a lot of stuff. Yeah, I hate he that he gets Nightmare on Elm Street. I what? He did. He did. He did. Not, 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 uh, West no. Craven. No, he didn't. I was about to say. I was about to say he gets a lot of credit for Nightmare Before Christmas. He, he was a he fucking producer. He's a producer. Yeah. You know, and I'm he gets all the right. fucking credit for that. I know he didn't direct it. It was Henry Selick. All right. Which he did a lot of movies too. <laughs> Yeah, I, I hate that. Oh, how much credit he gets for that shit. Bone, James and the Giant Peach. Bleh. My wife likes that movie. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan because I had that spider. <laughs> the, uh, the centipede. Oh, uh, no, thank you. Mars Attacks is a good one though. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Mars Attacks is fun. Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Oh, Pee-wee's Vacation's coming on Netflix pretty soon. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, Sweeney Todd, the Demon Hunter. The Demon, I don't like Sweeney the Demon Todd. Me neither. I, I like do it. not like Sweeney I, Todd. I think it's I really good. It. The thing with Sweeney Todd. The first half of that movie. The first half of that movie is perfect. I think I love the first maybe, half of it. Maybe that's the only reason of the second half. Because for me, it was Sweeney something Todd. Something about that movie did not click for me. You know, it may be a decent movie. It didn't click with me. But a big problem for me is when I watched it, I couldn't hear it. The music oh. boomed, boomed over the dialogue, and I, I like, oh. I was, con I had to turn subtitles on halfway through. I'm like, I can't understand really? a fucking word they're saying. I can't hear it. Yeah. I just hear this well, it's booming audio over the dialogue. Know, it's, it's a musical, so you have to listen to it cute, like, you know, like, you feel like you're listening to dialogue, like you're listening to singing. Well, yeah, but it's not even that. It's, I, I, I can, I can follow, uh, Les Mis or Rocky Horror just fine, you know, yeah. Little Shop of Horrors. Okay. The, the excuse that it's a musical is unjust. Talking about not being able to under, this has nothing to do with the musical, but not being able to understand the witch. You will die. Unless you I've heard that. That's the that's the main complaint I've heard about the witch. It's, you, you still, by their body language, by their acting, you know what's going on. Through the whole movie, you know what's going on. Yeah. It's just, they talk in that old Puritan age. Right. You know, modern. It's really confusing language that they talk in. And plus, they have thick British accent on top of it. So it's... I don't know. It's it's really hard to understand. I will tell you, there's a scene with like yeah. a boy. There's a scene with a boy. And um, have you have you seen Baby Squirt? Yeah. You know, whenever he like, and he's all bad. Yeah. Um. There's a scene right there that something happens where. I was listening to the director, and the director was like, we had to basically treat him like a puppet. And I know it sounds bad, but we had to treat him like a puppet because it was very graphic, and they couldn't have him knowing, and we had to have him saying things. Yeah. And saying them in a way where he wouldn't know what was... Like, Being said. Implied. It, or it, like, just implied, because it's definitely implied of what is happening whenever he's being dressed. Like, oh, that's, oh, that's disturbing. Like, I'm watching this, like, you know, eight year old boy do this. Yeah. And he has no idea, you know what I mean? Right. But I don't fucking want to. It's not really a. It's not really a. It's not really a spoiler by any means. I don't mind. Go, you can go ahead, but I don't know about Scott. Oh, yeah, he, he orgasms. Ah. Hmm. And it's just, it, like I said, this movie is very unsettling. I was like, oh, this is gross. Like, yeah. I felt like, oh, God. Oh, no. And I was like, well, how did they get this little boy to do this? Like, how? And I was listening. It just so happened that I completely forgot about it. And then yesterday I was listening to one of my podcasts, and they were interviewing him. And he said, you know, there's a scene where he's in bed, 
and I don't want to say what happens. He's like, right. we're talking about the orgasm. He's like, well, I didn't want to say it, but he has the orgasm. He's like, we had to basically get him to say that, and it's perfect. Like, the kid had no idea that that's what was implied, but it's perfect, and he, he actually sounds and says, and it's like, oh, God, it's disgusting. Interesting. Oh, it's creepy. Oh, I don't, oh, oh. Wow. Oh. Scott? Yep. Okay, just want to make sure you're there. I was going to tell you all bye-bye. I got to go watch the league. Yep, right. also bye-bye. It's been real, boys. All right, Ooh. I'll talk to you guys later. Later. Uh, I will probably be on at some point. <laughs>